Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm author Grace Rolson. This is Document the Narcissist. When co-parenting, when you're forced to co-parent or stuck in a high conflict custody battle, you want to do what I call your due diligence. Just like if uh, your ex you think might have a criminal record, you would want to do your due diligence and get a background check. Um, or if you think your ex has been involved in um, with DUIs or OUIs, you would want to have a PI or somebody, your lawyer, do a thorough uh, check in the systems to see if there's anything that you can use to help protect your children from being in a car with a drunk driver or with a criminal. So this is about doing what I call your due diligence. And if you don't know me, hi, welcome to my work. I'm author Grace Rolson. I'm a self-published author. If you're willing and ready to learn. I am here to teach. My background is <clears throat> loving an alcoholic for 15 years and writing books about breaking free of codependency, love addiction, trauma bonds. And then I spent 12 years in a family court custody battle with my narcissistic ex. And you can go to my website to learn more about me. But here are my four books in a row for moms that really do detail my journey, but more importantly, give you tools and tips and strategies on how I survived it. I didn't do it alone. I got lots of support, usually expert help. And I believe you can learn, heal, and outgrow the narcissist. If you are ready to learn and ready to change what you can, all of my books are available at Amazon. This uh, is my first book, and I always recommend start here because you want to establish some self-rules uh, to stay sane. It's been updated for 2024, and you really want to focus on your like your love for your child, which has to be bigger than your hate for the narcissist. And I always tell moms it's it's okay to hate evil. I get it. Um, that's you know these are all my opinions, and I always like to say take what you like, leave the rest. This new book has a bonus chapter if you buy it, not on Audible, but it, it is available on Audible. If you buy it on Amazon, Kindle, or print, you will get my Get the Right Lawyer Guide to have the 20-question attorney interview worksheet that some of my private mom clients say the lawyers that they interviewed thought they were so prepared and they knew exactly what they uh, needed to focus on in their case. So it cuts out all of the drama where the narcissist thrives in drama and we get drained, us empaths will get drained in the drama. So let me ask you, do you know what to document when dealing with a narcissist? Do you know how to document when dealing with a narcissist? So welcome to my work. If you're forced to co-parent with a narcissist or stuck in a high conflict custody battle, this can be such a helpful guide. I teach moms how to document strategically so they can keep their sanity. My motivated mom clients get a documentation strategy in place so they don't feel like they have to document absolutely everything. <clears throat> if documenting everything feels heavy, you are not alone. It's more work we have to do thanks to the narcissist. However, we can simplify so we don't get too overwhelmed by having too much to do related to the narcissist. We want some time to be a mom to our children or even have a life and do some self-care. We can target the things that matter to a judge. When documenting a narcissist, we, we run the risk of focusing too much on the narcissist. And this can bring you down or get you into rage. We want to stay clear of heavy emotions. We want to keep our sanity to remain common, uh, logical and use common sense. So there needs to be some systems and strategy in place. So please um, know I have a disclaimer uh, and you can read this and pause. This is just shared survivor wisdom. And um, you really want to ask your lawyer, which I'll get into, of what to document in your case. Once a lawyer has listened, a family court lawyer who knows the family courts and your judge. And uh, before I keep going... Uh, yes, I just self-published Tame the Narcissist, uh, 10 Keys for Better Co-Parenting to Create Peace and Protection Using Strategy and Skillful Means. So that's now available in Kindle in print on Amazon. Sorry, just wanted to let you know that's what I've been busy doing and starting a Spotify podcast. So let's go back to this documentation. What's my first key? Document the narcissist strategically. 
what I have seen in my private life coaching practice is moms without guidance fall into fear. Also, the moms who underestimate the narcissist often get ambushed. Even though he, the narcissist, shows little to no interest year after year in the child or children, doesn't mean he wouldn't file for sole custody all of a sudden or at the exact moment when you go into the hospital for surgery and he finds out somehow. Obviously, this happened to me. So key, don't underestimate the narcissist. Be prepared for anything with good documentation. So it's smart to be prepared for anything the narcissist might do to get out of paying child support, to punish, or to win against you. A narcissist doesn't stop being a narcissist when they leave us or when we leave them. They are still narcissists even if they get into a new relationship. They are still narcissists even if they quit drugs or stop drinking and get sober. They are still a narcissist if they buy a new house or get a new job. If you are failing to document the narcissist, recognize that you might be self-sabotaging. We need to safeguard our custody cases with good, solid, organized, strategic documentation. And the key, set yourself up for success. Plan. I, I know I always bring that quote up. If you don't um, make a plan, you kind of plan to fail. So this is about creating a documentation plan. Getting ourselves set up and ready to document can help us stay organized and clear about what needs to be recorded and how. I tell moms to make sure you record things in the moment because we are so busy and it's easy to forget and lose track. Catch it in the moment, but also be sure to make it quick and just record the facts. Have a support system for the emotional toil co-parenting, quote unquote, with a narcissist can take on you, even if you are just parallel parenting. It's not a good idea or habit to sit down every night before bed and record the narcissistic drama of the day. Before bed, you want to list your accomplishments and gratitudes. You want to take those positive thoughts into your sleep and subconscious mind. Key, record the narcissist in the moment. Record the data in the moment. Document, document, document the narcissist, huh? Document everything is the general advice I see floating around the internet. Wait, what? Document until you're so drained that you can't be a loving mom but only show up to your parenting time burnt out? Stay focused on the narcissist, huh? I do believe that we need to be documenting the narcissist and building a custody case when forced to co-parent with a narcissist. But I also believe it's better and wise uh, to do, but not overdo and thus come undone. So work with wisdom. The advice to document everything is almost reasonable. And you and I both know why. One, the narcissist lies. And two, we're so busy carrying so much responsibility that we tend to forget dates and details. So it's not totally wrong advice. It's just overwhelming and lacks a strategy. Please read my disclaimer. Key. Our organization is the key to the narcissist disorganized mess. If you are a mom forced to co-parent with a narcissist, then you will most likely have many problems with everything from late drop-off times to paying for activities or not to communication issues. If you are in a high-conflict custody battle, you will also probably have loads of work and responsibility to document, document, document everything the narcissist does and doesn't do you will probably have enormous legal fees. But what if there was an easier way? I'm a mom survivor of a 12-year family court battle with a narcissist, so please hear, hear me out. If you don't know my story, I received what I describe as a total miracle. Miracle meaning a shift in perception. I remember the day my third attorney called me out of the blue. I was just getting out of bed for the morning I was full on ready to fight and do another trial in family court the following week to vindicate myself, clear my good name, and get my rights restored to my only trial by a new judge who understood DV, domestic violence issues. But instead, I got a call that said my ex, the narcissist, agreed to settle. I said, what? My ex? It was hard to believe that the wealthy narcissist who refused to negotiate for 10 years suddenly wanted to settle. There had to be a catch. Him settle? Ha! I asked, what's the catch? That's when my new lawyer said he agreed to everything you wanted. I was in shock and disbelief. I rubbed my eyes wondering if I was still dreaming and not yet awake. I asked everything, he replied. Yes, everything. 
including paying child support at the same amount. I sat in stillness and silence. Every single year for a decade, the narcissist filed to reduce or eliminate child support. He then asked, well, should I write this up? I was hesitant and confused. I asked, what about, what about the added and requested stipulation of no drinking on his parenting time? He said, yep, he's agreed to all your requests. I asked my lawyer, why all of a sudden? My lawyer replied, don't know, must have just gotten tired. In the last four-way meeting over Zoom, my ex's new unsuspecting attorney took her client's side and said, no way, I won't have my client get in trouble for having a beer on his parenting weekend. They wouldn't budge on the issue. What she didn't know was we were not talking about one beer. If that were the case, this wouldn't be brought up. Instead, we're talking about a six pack a day and two boxes of wine per night that my child was reporting to me. I really don't know. I really didn't know at the time what to do with all the energy I had built up being ready for another family court battle. I sat stunned for an hour after we hung up. There'd be no battle. I was all pumped and ready this time. I'd found leverage, got a better lawyer, and got mental and emotional support to do battle. Maybe the narcissist sensed that? Or was it my boldness to force my attorney to find multiple contempts after the smug, arrogant narcissist refused to negotiate in our last four-way meeting? Whatever it was, I know I was operating differently and was leading with an offense, not just a defense this time. I crafted my 20 wants list and led my lawyer with that. You can see that blog or pick it up in that new Tame the Narcissist book. I called my lawyer and pushed to file the 10 contempts that were sitting for leverage and requested legal fees that the, the narcissist to pay my legal fees again right before this trial. I was using my three-part strategy. I was using my gray walling method, also called castle and curtain. And most importantly, I was using my skillful means strategy. All these strategies that I implemented for protection, peace, and claiming my rights as a parent had finally paid off. I am a big proponent of working smarter, not harder. I believe that if we moms conserve our energy, then we will have some leftover to share in the joy of our children's one and only childhood. I use my lawyer strategically. I also had to be brave to stand up to the narcissist in a safe, pre-planned way. I was working with wisdom, not emotion. The key, work smarter, not harder. Start doing your documentation strategically. What if instead of documenting the narcissist and recording everything, you instead document strategically, systematically, in an organized way? Isn't it true that the narcissist will cherry pick incidents and highlight them when he wants to blame you for something? Isn't it true that he will recall a time when you weren't at your best and use that one single incident against you? The narcissist knows how to build leverage for manipulation. That's why he listens to your secrets and stories. He's planning on using them later if and when he needs to. Take charge of your custody case. I want you to keep this in mind. Only you know what's best for you in your custody case. We have many choices in this matter. Take charge of major decisions and don't be led astray by greedy lawyers who don't care about you or your child, but rather the billable hour. If your lawyer hasn't instructed you on what to keep track of, then you may need to ask him or her. If your lawyer is clueless or won't return your call, you may need to switch lawyers. If your lawyer doesn't have the paperwork together, is not meeting deadlines, you may have to find a better, more available representation. Custody battles with narcissists are often high conflict, and we tend to be needy clients. This means we need legal guidance, working things out on our own, when we don't know the family law can lead us to mistakenly thinking it's a straight line to a judge in justice, it seems that we have a legal system rather than a justice system. I truly wish it was about child abuse prevention or protection of vulnerable children against abusers, but I found it more geared towards parents' rights instead. Often it seems that whoever has the most money or best legal power wins. Read my 10 factors to consider if and when switching lawyers. That's a blog and in my fourth book. Key, 
take charge of your custody case. Organize a court binder and evidence binder. I don't advise my mom clients to rely 100% on the narcissist to survive financially. I also don't advise my clients to rely on their lawyer 100% for their custody case. I believe we have to do some gathering of evidence and paralegal type work ourselves. We need to read and reread our court order and highlight things that we need to remember to follow. We need to have a court binder ready so we can recall the date of the last court order or the incident involving child abuse. Our dates need to be committed to memory so that if we are testifying on the stand, we can factually recall them for the judge and establish credibility. One mom client of mine started her big red binder of evidence and brought it to a last minute hearing that her lawyer couldn't get to. Guess what? The narcissist was so intimidated by seeing the enormous binder that, that she prepped ready with evidence that he backed off his case and dropped his motion for sole custody. See what being ready can do? Key, with your documentation, be ready. What I teach moms is to document one, defensively, two, offensively, and three, strategically for safeguards, creating leverage, and more. If we just document defensively, we don't have a strong stance. We need an offense when it comes to the narcissist. I documented all the failed parent-child phone calls with my child that my ex tampered with and used it in an evidentiary hearing. I read each incident aloud, at loud, <laughs> aloud, as my lawyer instructed. From the loud ice scraping in the background to the blasting of his music in his truck, to being part of the conversation and forcing our child to put me on speakerphone, the judge could understand the pattern of behavior from multiple incidents. And so the narcissist was found in contempt and I was awarded legal fees for his games. Key, you can document the narcissist to safeguard your custody case against false PA parental alienation claims. What is the narcissist doing in your case? Can you labor, label it in a general category? Is the narcissist always late? Is he trying to make you purposely late for work? Document all the late drop-offs in a list. Number them one through 50 or however many you tally. This way you can summarize at the top. For example, in the past three months, the narcissist was late to a drop-off 20 times. Your Honor. Typically, it's not the father was late one to three times that will catch a judge's attention. Rather, it's a disrespectful pattern of multiple instances. And failures. To hear more, pick up this Document the Narcissist. It's in a blog or in my fourth, uh, fifth book. I hope this little um, sample was helpful for you. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Remember, you can learn, heal, and outgrow the narcissist.